tickets online um, by midnight the day before you're coming as this really will be strictly enforced and the other thing is that we have something now called Babington TV which is the live stream behind a pay, pay wall um, and again anybody wanting details about this please go to our website and you'll find out all about it and there's so much back content as well a huge catalogue of um previous badmintons to enjoy and um, what about your experience with badminton because you've been here nearly 50 years it's your first as event director how are you feeling as excited as i always have done for the last sort of 47 years so it's all exciting it's always exciting that is what we like to hear and what about a successful badminton what does that mean for you a successful badminton is having good weather um, which is really the main ingredient in many ways and everybody that comes has a good time right the way through from the owners, riders, sponsors, contractors, trade stands, officials, visitors. Let's all have a really good time. That is what we're looking forward to. Thank you so much, Jane. Good luck over the next few weeks. Thank you very much. Oh, the team have been working so, so hard here at Badminton and we cannot wait to all be back here to enjoy it in person. Uh, now, it's the moment we have all been waiting for. Let's go and find out what is in store for the cross country with course designer Eric Winter and the man giving his opinion who has been here more times than anybody else. 47 starts to be precise, absolutely extraordinary. 2017 winner, Andrew Nichols. Continue on to Powder House Road Southeast. Eric, what can you tell us about the courses this year? Um, I think we've stayed very much at the level of cross country that we were in 2019. Um, it's big, it's brave. At the next Before light, riding, turn right. Um, there's a little bit of everything. There's a bounce on the course. Uh, they've, we've moved away as we've sort of started to from the sort of colt pond at the bottom and tried to move to the hillier sections. Um, and we've changed the track quite dramatically down in the Vicarage ditch lines. That's quite an intense route, but some really big ditches down there. There's a, a ditch prior to the Vicarage V that makes the Vicarage V look very jumpable. So At the light, um, turn right onto East Pine Log Road. Kick on, but uh, yeah, it should be a really exciting year. And what have you changed for 2022 compared to the course that you had planned for 2020? Very little, yeah. 2020, I said it's the um, longest, longest build up to a cross country course in the world sort of thing, because because we came up with the route and everything in uh, 2020 uh, and put the fences out in 2020 and then it was cancelled. And uh, so we've stuck pretty well with that same track because I really liked it and, and we should see how that works out. But uh, yeah, it's very much the same. And Andrew, you've been here 47 times. For you, what makes a great badminton course? What are you hoping to see? Well, we're hoping to see the, the big, bold fences that you know, we expect at badminton and with the, the same bits that have been in there for years, like the Huntsman's Close. In two the, the quarry, the in lake, three quarters uh, of a mile, turn right things. onto Audubon Drive Southeast. Um, you're going to head out and walk the course in a moment. What do you look for in terms of the terrain when you're walking the course here? What makes it different? Well, Babington is is normally quite flattish compared with um, some of the others, but we realise that Eric likes to use any little undulations there are in the course, which for me I would have loved that you know, make, make yourself work a bit harder, work the horses a bit more, and you have to concentrate right to the end. So, yeah, I'm interested to, to see what he's done. Are you nervous about what Andrew thinks, Eric? Uh, no, uh, one of the things that made me laugh is <laughs> one of the things that Ingrid said the first year I designed here, is she came back off the cross country, and then she was getting off, and then she walked past me and she said, do you know what, she said, I've ridden here however many times, and she said, I thought badminton was flat. Boy, that didn't feel flat. <laughs> um, and so we look for all those little bits of gradient that give yourself a little bit of a, just whether the riders have to show a little bit of feel and whether the they have to uh, really ride rather than cross country that is a really a replica you know well look we're gonna let you so. two go and walk it andrew we can't wait to see what you think okay let's go let's go yep. turn right onto lion drive southeast then turn right onto banks mill road southeast so this is the first combination on the course um they've come and they've jumped three fences to start with pretty open run and jump fences and then they swing to this log which is on top of the steep slope run down the slope through the bottom of the quarry up over the little wall at the bottom here to the brush fence or they can jump over the log. Turn right onto Pinehurst Avenue Southeast, 
then turn right onto Banks Mill Road southeast. The other brush fence, the other brush fence is on a lot more strides, uh, but really just to sort of start off fence to get them going. Simple jumps to start with, then into the quarry a log that you need to squeeze the horse up to, push them up to the front of... At the stop sign, turn right onto South Boundary Avenue Southeast, then turn left onto Charleston Street Southeast. Right up to the wall, and then just use your eyes and turn and ride to the, the box element to finish with. It's, for me, it's a good place in the course to get the riders sitting down and riding the horse. Because I'm sure we're going to have a lot more difficult things coming later where they're going to have to sit down and ride. So you sort of come in here and then I'm thinking you've got to arc this. To jump there and then keep that arc through the the three fences so a bit of a curve the yeah. b element yeah another curve back to the right to the c element i was sort of thinking they'd be straight between the two but they yeah. probably could depend on how handy your horse was really the width on these hedges makes a lot of difference to them if yeah. they were little vertical panels it'd be much easier than with them they're with going to jump out them. yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so that this is huntsman's close which has been here for years as well and for me is one of the most difficult parts on the course today you see it looks very light in here there's no leaves on the trees by the time of the event the leaves are getting coming out more and more every day and i always found when you rode it you needed at the next stop sign turn right out there because you're going light into dark and give yourself a chance and the horse a chance to focus on this. The turn is, is difficult in here. And like Eric has said, ideally you'd want to do a little curving. I At the stop sign, correct. turn right onto Park Avenue Southeast. And trust myself to turn in the air after the B yeah. element. But each rider will be a bit different. In 1.1 miles, turn right onto Wagner Road. Um, there's a relationship between the three fences. They're not necessarily related as in yeah. you're not definitely locked into three strides or four strides, but for sure the way you jump one will dictate how you get to the other one. There has and, to be a plan to it. And yeah. that's cross-country riding, isn't it? It's, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you've yeah. got to deal with what comes yeah. up. Yeah. Heading to the tree and then just open the left in the last stride. Sit yeah. on the back, yeah. turn, and then hopefully be able to turn a little bit yeah. right back again. Yeah. But like yeah. you've said, they're quite wide. You know, they'll make the horses yeah, jump absolutely. big. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the angle on the last one is really quite yeah. steep. You know, as soon as you finish up here, At the next light, turn right. If you're not careful to pull it yeah. back to correct it. So when you get to here, it doesn't look too bad at angle, does yeah, it? But yeah. two From strides back, there, it, back look, yeah. it looks... Yeah, yeah. You've got to ride them a little bit individually, I yeah. think. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a case of jump A, jump B, jump C. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. At the light, turn right onto Wagner Road, so the then day. continue straight. Uh, They've had Huntsman's, which is quite a difficult combination, but I think the bulk will jump there. But the lake always traditionally at Badminton has been uh, a pretty much a deal closer for some people. Um, you want a good horse into water. Um, we've brought them up and done something different. We've jumped them in the opposite direction through the lake this time. Um, so it means they'll come up into the crowd and have to turn Continue back onto on Wagner Road. Road. To jump the first brush into the water. And then they've got a distance to the second one, which is a either or they can go left or right. When you jump the first brush, it's slightly easier to go to the outside brush but it makes the third brush on the top of the mound much harder. In 1.1 miles, turn left. If you can jump this on a little bit of an angle or, or pop in a bit and you can get to the brush on the left in the water, it makes the last one much easier to come out over. He's allowed you to have a little water splash at the other end of the lake on the way up here where you go into the lake, jump a simple fence, which for the rider's point of view, it gives them a bit of confidence they've done a bit of water. I don't think it makes any difference to the horse, <laughs> but. You then have quite a longish gallop up to a difficult turn back to get into the lake. You know, you got to think you're turning a little bit away from home to a big log 
which is good in some ways in the way you can then show the horse the fence, put your leg on, a bit of gas on and ride them up to it. Good jump in. I would prefer the left hand route because the lake here, the more you go down it, the deeper it gets and the harder it is to turn. So in thinking left to the left hand side and direct out. It's proper, proper yeah. five star jumping. Yeah, it's a big old jump. And if you over jump the log in, you'll finish up with a biggish drop into the water. And then to regain your knitting and organization afterwards will be, you know, will favor experienced yeah. horses that can roll over a fence a yeah. little bit. You, you know. can't stop the horse jumping too big in. Yeah. Okay, all you can do is done enough mileage to get here. The horse will know the moment he leaves the ground that he can put his front feet down early before the water and not have to have the big drop. Yeah. It's only the horse that's not so experienced or not so clever will be the one that will give you the big drop into the water. This is a broken bridge. It's a run and jump fence between combinations. Um, but the thing about five stars, and, and especially at badminton, our running jump fences are not just plain running jump fences. So actually there's a whole lot to this. It's a biggish old drop and, and, um, and a lot of riders, you know, this is a fence that's directly extracted from the sort of 60s, 70s cross country, uh, you know, back in the 1960s and 70s when they used to jump this type of thing. Nowadays we don't meet it so much. So it'd be a new experience for some people, I think. Don't you? You're making me smile because I jumped one of these sort of things and it wasn't in the okay. 60s or the 70s. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm not that quite that old. I think it was yeah. in the 80s. In the 80s, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. it is, it's just like Eric's explained it, it's one of those fences that, you know, you look at it and you think, how am I going to do this? There's only one thing you're going to be sure of, that you're not going to run off it because it's got the guard rails on it. You but can't go sideways when you no, want to be kicking. Exactly, a lot. <laughs> but the horses should jump it very, very well, but it has got a big drop and it's different. So this is the brush finish. They come over a big brush box to start with and then they have however many strides they want. Down to the two corners, Turn left onto main drive. Quarter, um, the flags are not actually in the correct place at the moment, uh, but to jump this corner close to the red flag and then jump the other corner close to the white flag. There's three very open strides between the two, so you really need to be travelling their big jumps. Um, or there's a slow route to, to go round it. Um, I think it'd be very interesting to me. The interesting in a quarter mile, turn right onto Red Oak Drive. Yeah, I'm guessing we're about five minutes, are we, yeah, onto yeah, the course? Yeah. Yeah. And the footbridge there. Turn right onto Red Oak Drive. In a quarter mile, turn right onto the Toby Avenue. Then turn right onto Red Oak Drive. Uh, does look quite close to the first brush box, so the riders have got to be. Proceed to the route. So this is the brush finish. They come over a big brush box to start with, and then they have however many strides they want down to the two corners. Uh, to jump this corner, um, the flags are not actually in the correct place at the moment, uh, but to jump this corner close to the red flag and then jump the other corner close to the white flag. There's three very open strides between the two, so you really need to be travelling their big jumps. Um, or there's a slow route to, to go round it. Um, I think it'd be very interesting. To me, the interesting thing will be the relationship. In three quarters of a mile, turn right onto Wagner yeah. Road. I'm guessing we're about five minutes, are we, yeah, onto yeah, the course? Yeah, yeah. And the footbridge there does look quite close to the first brush box, so the riders have got to be very quick on landing to pick them up to get back to the correct rhythm, because 
when you jump the footbridge, you're gonna land a bit slow and it'd be very easy to stay too slow and be then jumping a little too high and a bit de deliberate over these brushes. Yeah. The box yeah. is a big fence, but it's straightforward enough. It's all in the turn and the line you pick to do the three. The three strides are very positive, very forward strides to another big corner. But the option looks very jumpable, very smooth, and not so time consuming. So I can see quite a lot of riders. Turn right onto Wagner Road. Better I'd go the little quieter way round the two corners, but a very fair fence and a proper five star combination. So this is the leap combination. It comes after. Giuseppe's Pond with the uh, waterfall in and the, and the steep turn to the other fence. Um, an unusual fence, a uh, very big ditch in the middle, but quite a flat sort of coffin-y type thing. And the slope is used at the far end of that uh, to jump the little narrow brush fence. Turn right, then arrive at your destination. Uh, which for five-star horses, I think nowadays they find that fairly easy. Yes. But on the other hand, there's some big jumping again to do in it and, and a, certainly a big ditch in the middle. Yeah, it's... it's, it's Arrived. You know, the, the brush is a tall brush, downhill. It walks three good strides to the ditch and then it walks two long strides to the last element. But the terrain is very up and down. Yeah. So for me, I'm sure the horses will do three from the ditch to the last element, the sea element. It's just a case of jumping one, jumping the other, and jumping the other. When the ground keeps going away from you, you, you can't really walk it on your feet and judge what you're gonna do. Sometimes you have to sit very still, very secure, and let the horse do its thing. So this is the corners. Uh, we've just come over the brush and the ditch and the, and the little narrow brush at the bottom of the slope. So that's a very quick footwork thing. Uh, this is really about accuracy. It's a really sort of modern question, but with a bit of a, a spin on it because there's a big dip in the middle between the two, which is where we used to have the old ditch in the bottom of there. Um, traditionally, we jumped a set of rails at the top down to the ditch and, and out over something. Uh, but this is a different spin on that piece of ground because we jump a big corner in, whatever how many strides you want to put between the two it'll just be you and the horse and a relationship between the two to come back to this corner here um andrew what do you think yeah i i love it i think it's you know proper cross-country riding again we've got a decent corner the first one on a little bit of uneven ground land and then you you have to go through the natural dip and it's it's quite a down and an up and then present at the next corner. So you've got to be able to sit down and ride what you've got, not think oh, I'll walk it and it's five strides, 10 strides, whatever. Because every time you jump it, you could do different stride patterns. You've got to jump one, negotiate the undulations, jump the second one. It's proper cross-country riding. They're very much two fences, aren't they? There's a relationship between the two fences, yes. but they're not related, and as in that would definitely and be a that stride And a little diffi but difficult ground in between them. Absolutely, you know? yeah, which breaks you up. Yeah, yeah. So, you so just got, got to, to work yeah. a bit. And, and this is the ditch and rails. Um, it comes on the new part this year. It comes after the corners, which are through the old sort of coffin area. Um, just a big fly ditch rails. But I think the interesting thing about this, other than the fact that it's enormous, is the relationship between this and the Vicarage V. I don't know whether jumping this big ditch beforehand and then swinging back to the Vicarage V will make that easier or whether it'll make the Vicarage V harder. What do you think? I think it'll make it harder. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this one does look very big. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you've got a horse that's a little ditchy, yeah. you've showing it a big ditch here and then yeah. you immediately got another big another look alike yeah, yeah. it's a bit smaller yeah yeah but it's the yeah. same yeah that could make that the second one harder but for sure it's a proper ditch and rail
without a doubt. And I think when they jump over this, I think they'll they'll absolutely know whether they're going to go to the Vicarage V or not. If they have a nice jump over this, they'll go right. to the Vicarage V. Right. If they have a static jump over this or it's not very comfortable, then they can go the slow route to the Vicarage V. Yeah, and, and I think from my experience with being here, it's far enough round the course. Yeah. If, yeah. You've, if you've been going clear and well, yeah. Yeah. they normally will step over this. Yes, if, exactly. you, if you get yeah. the right line, yeah and a reasonable place to jump yeah. it from, they yeah. will step over it. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's just a dramatic yeah. fence. It's yeah. not I, that I think the couple of corners before yeah. technically are probably a little harder. OK, the option is to come up the steep slope here, jump over this one to the bounce, or to be able to go that side and jump over that and then run down the hill here jump over the one in the bottom and then those two offset fences on the way out. But I'd ideally like the bulk of the horses to jump the banks here. Um, what do you think? For, for me, I like the direct way. Yeah. Up the slope, over, down the slope, up, bounce. To me, all horses can bounce. It's yeah, very yeah. natural to them. It's yeah. a rider thing that yeah. thinks they can't. And by this stage, it's much easier to keep straight, ride the undulations up, jump in, let the horse jump out. Yeah. Your alternative, psychologically for them, can look simpler, yeah. but that's hard work, yeah, yeah, to jump. You're going to do a lot of work in there, because it's a, like, it, that's two it, or three strides, and that's yeah. open two at the end. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 they have to work, yeah. and yeah, I'd much rather do the bounce. Yeah, I would have done as well, yeah. yeah. Good. Well done. So, Andrew, what do you make of it? I think it's very good. Eric's done a very impressive job with it. It's proper five star, he's used more hills, a little bit more undulation in the ground than normal and the riders will have to ride very well and have very good horses to be in the lead after the cross country. Proper five star test? For sure it is, yes. I'm looking forward to watching them. Yeah, I think it's a, a decent track but it's always good to have confirmation from Andrew that um, that it's a proper test. I don't think there's anything out there that's unjumpable. You think that's really, that's the key thing but actually it's the package of the whole thing put together and the way it comes up with the ground, I think it will come up as a proper test, yeah. And in terms of plenty to jump out there, Andrew, there is plenty, we've seen that. Is there anything, is there anything in particular that you think might cause trouble? A whole lot of them. <laughs> no, it's, I think it's very fair. It's, it's very much tells a story from the start to the finish and you know, each fence leads you on to the next one, the next one which for me is what it should all be about but you have to be very much onto it from the huntsman's bit right the way on that it does come at you thick and fast and you know you've got to be able to to ride and know where you're going what you're doing and stick to your plan stick to your plan do you wish you were riding it now you've seen no it. no I'm, I'm very happy walking around <laughs> and just doing this sort of chat stuff it's much more up my alley now you can be much more of an expert when you've given up riding at this level because you can say i can't believe you did that that badly <laughs> and, but i've just been able to walk into the main arena here and feel very relaxed about it <laughs> you've never done that before no. <laughs> Well, look, thank you so much. We have loved having your insight, Andrew. Eric, good luck. We can't wait to see how it unfolds. Thank you very much, Nicole. So there you have it. That is what is in store on the cross country course. And in a few short weeks, these stands are going to be packed as everybody looks to see who will be crowned the badminton 2022 champion. So who are the key contenders? Well, Oliver Townend lines up with a couple of rides, Ballamore class, possibly the favorite of the two. And in fact, a horse that has been here three times, never out of the top. Five. Defending champion Piggy March, also another with two rides in the field. Her 2019 champion, Veneer Kamira, but also the horse on whom she took an individual silver medal at the European Championships in Avanche last year, Brookfield Innocent. At New Zealand, they have a really strong record here at Badminton. Seven wins across the years. And Tim Price will line up with a horse that was actually on the podium here at Badminton back in 2017 in Xavier Fair, as well as a former Burley winner in Ringwood Sky Boy. Another five-star winner in the field is Australia's Hazel Shannon, who makes her badminton debut. They've won three Adelaide five-stars on board Willinger Park Clifford. Can they add badminton to the list? And of course, there is an unbelievably strong US contingent. Olympian Philip Dutton brings forward his Tokyo Mount Z, but all eyes should be on Tammy Smith. Do not be surprised to see a US flag on top of that leaderboard, particularly 
after the dressage. My Balm, an excellent first phase horse, and he's very, very good in the other phases as well. We could well see a US winner here at badminton this year. It is certainly one of the strongest fields we have seen at badminton in recent years. And who will be on top of that podium at the end of the weekend? Well, we can't wait to find out. And you will be able to watch all of the action across badminton TV. It promises to be an epic.